What's going on guys, Balkan Architect here and in today's tutorial I'm going to be sharing with you these 5 amazing tips and tricks that I wish I knew when I started modeling in Revit. But before I get started I would just like to ask you to like this tutorial, it helps me out a lot and if you haven't already I suggest you subscribe because I bring you these cool tutorials each week, about 3 each week. Also if you want to download all of my Revit project files or if you want to get access to some of my advanced 1 hour Revit courses, I've got 10 out so far, check out uh, the first link in the description for my Patreon, you can get access to those over there. Okay, with that out of the way, let's get into these five amazing tips and tricks for Revit. So the first one is going to be modifying lines in Revit. Usually when people are uh, talking about Revit, they keep complaining about Revit making these lines that they don't like and they don't want to see. Well, Revit has actually a tool to help you with that. So before I do anything, I'm just going to go here to South Elevation and just add a few more levels. So I'm just going to select this uh, this elevation and I can right click and go create similar to create a new one so that's a just a small tip along the way it's not included in these five tips don't worry and also for that create similar option you can use the shortcut CS so just select something and type in CS and it's going to allow you to create a similar element okay so we've got a few levels over here right now so I'm just going to go into maybe I don't know 3d and let's go with the wall tool and let's do a simple wall over here. Now I'm going to select it and I'm just going to attach it to go from uh, base constraint level 1 up to a top constraint of level 2 and then I'm just going to multiply it. So maybe you have multiple floors so you would like to have uh, walls stack on stacked on each other so you would go here to you would go here to copy on the modify tab go to paste align to selected levels and then you would choose the rest of the levels. Hit OK and there you go, you've got a bunch of these walls. Okay, here we have some problems, but let's fix it. Okay, here's the problem. There we go. Okay, so once I've stacked these walls, you're going to notice that here we have these lines between the walls. And sometimes you're going to have it, Revit does this in multiple cases, so it's really annoying to have these lines and the way you can uh, kind of fix that is to use the line work tool. But before we can use the line work tool, what I suggest you do is you create a new line, an invisible line or a no line, so to speak. So what I'm going to do is go here to the manage tab, go to additional settings. Here we have line styles. I'm going to open that up and just go to new line styles and let's call this one no line. So we've got a line that's called no line. I don't know why I entered an O. Okay, no line, is this? Okay, this is a P. Okay, I'm not really good with spelling today. Okay, so we've got no lines, and it's called no line, and just for the color, I'm going to make it white, so it kind of blends in with the rest of it. So I'm just going to hit apply, okay, and now we've got this new line style, so if I go here to modify, I can go here and use this line work tool, as you can see the shortcut is LW, so I can also type in that, just LW, and here we have it's activated. So here you choose the line you want to use and I'm just going to go with my no line and then you go here on the project and you pick a line that you want to just apply your new line style. So this tool allows you to apply a new line style to here. So if I just select this line and apply this no line line style, it disappears. Well, it just turns white so uh, you can't see it. So I can do this for multiple lines. I can also do this for these lines as well so it looks like this, okay, it looks weird, but you get the point. You can play around and kind of fix the line work if you don't like some of the lines that are existing. You can actually manually change the line style. This is similar to AutoCAD where you can manually change some of the lines. Okay, moving on, this was very cool. So let's just delete these upper walls for now. Okay, so we've got this one wall down here right now. So I'm going to go just to level one and here for this wall, let's change it. Let's make it maybe some thicker wall. So for the second tip in Revit that I'm going to be sharing with you is to kind of cope the wall ends in Revit and how to wrap them. So if I go and change this to maybe brick on metal stud, 
So let's do this. And if I go here and make it fine, as far as the detail level goes, we're going to add some layers over here. Now, once we've added these layers, you can see the, the wall kind of ends flat, but you probably know about the option of of layer wrapping. So if I select this wall, go into edit type, and here, when you go into structure, you're going to notice that for these all of these materials, we've got this wraps option. So basically wrapping one material over the other. Usually you would wrap the uh, finishing materials over the structure material. So all of these materials are wrapping, but here on the end, it doesn't wrap. Well, that's because we have this default wrapping options. So we've got that op option both for inserts and wall ends. So let's talk first about wall ends. Here, let's say we want to wrap the exterior layers around the core. So here, if I just change this to exterior, go OK, hit apply. There we go. So it wraps around the structural core. I can also flip that to interior. So if I go edit type, go here and switch that to interior, hit OK, apply, OK. It seems like nothing has happened. That's because we've got this thick exterior line. But if I go into thin lines, you're going to notice that the interior finish is wrapping around and going all the way to the exterior. Also, if I were to go here and add maybe a door, let's add a window Okay, window as well. Let's go with a bigger one like this. There we go. So we've got this window, we've got this door, let's flip it to the other side. So we've got these two elements and let's place them here. And now let's go into edit type. Okay, first you need to select the wall, go into edit type and here go into structure and here I'm just going to do uh, default wrapping at inserts. Inserts are all of the doors and uh, windows in your wall. And let's go with exterior, hit OK, apply, and there we go. Now it wraps all of the layers up to the center line usually. So this is the center line of the wall is going down the middle, so it's probably wrapping those uh, layers around the uh, up to the center line. Of the of the family here that's inserted. So the center line of the door is obviously over here, and the center line of the window is up here where the window actually is. Also, you can do that for the interior. So again, select the wall, go into edit type. So you just switch this to interior and go OK, apply, and there we go. So it's kind of wrapping it over here, as you can see. So those are those options for wall wraps, and it looks a lot better right now. Okay, moving on. Let's go with tip number three. And tip number three is going to be adding additional walls as wall layers. So in this case, if I go into 3D, we have this door over here, we have this window over here, but this wall is the same material on the inside going from bottom to the top. Now, let's say you want to have an additional finish maybe some ceramics or something like that, that's just up to like one meter, one and a half meters, something like that. Maybe in, in the bathroom or something like that where you want to cover it and protect a certain part of the wall from water damage, but you don't want to do it on the whole wall. Well, in that case, you can use additional walls as just additional covering materials. So this isn't anything new, but I'm going to show you a problem that appears with these openings and then, of course, how to fix it. So I'm just going to switch this to maybe floor plan, maybe flip this to the other side, just so here on the interior it looks like this, so we've got this whole opening. Okay, let's go back to level one. I'm going to go here to the walls and let's go with the basic wall, go into edit type and let's just duplicate it and call it finish wall. hit OK and here I'm going to go into structure and let's just change the thickness to something like 20 millimeters. Let's say that's enough. Go OK and here just for the height, leave it at unconnected and I'm going to go with 1200 millimeters. And for the location line, I'm going to go with finish face exterior and then let's place it over here just as an additional layer. So if I place it over here, just like that, you're going to notice that now it covers this opening. That's because all of these openings in Revit, like doors and windows, are only cutting the void in the initial uh, wall on which they're placed. If we go into 3D, it's nice that we have this finish layer, but again, it's covering up the opening. Well, the trick to solve this is to go to modify and use the join tool. So if you just join these two walls, this void from the door or from the window is going to actually be cutting through it. 
So that's just an option on how to do this in Revit. Okay, moving on to tip number four, and tip number four is going to be all about uh, all about curtain walls and how to fix them up. Let's go here to wall, and then I'm just going to go with storefront, and let's create a curtain wall over here. Now this is uh, quite small, so I'm just going to extend it a bit. Okay, here we go. So we've got a curtain wall over here, and we can also modify these mullions. So first, let's Let's just go into the floor plan and just flip this wall to the other side. So the, the glass is on this side. Let me now go back into 3D. Okay, so here I've got the same mallion for both the top and for the for the exterior uh, for the exterior type, but also for the interior type. So for all of these interior mallions, we've got the same type or the same dimensions of the mallion as for the exterior ones. We can of course change this. So if I just select this curtain wall, and if I go here into edit type. I can scroll down a bit and here maybe for the vertical and for the horizontal ones for the interior type let's choose something smaller like the 30 millimeter square so let's do that for both of these interior types hit apply okay and there we go now we've got the smaller ones on the interior side now when I scroll out you might see that here I've got some problems so because th these now types are smaller they're here emphasizing this gap that we have over here on top. That's because this vertical mallion is going through the exterior mallion. Now usually it won't be like this, you would have these connect uh, all the way through and for that we need a some system of coping these uh, construction elements. So for that you can actually select the mallion and here you've got this little kind of a little toggle mallion join option and if I hit that it's going to disjoin the top one and then just reconnect these two and you can do that for the rest of these so that's how you can fix up these mallions also you can do the same thing over here so here the the vertical one is going all the way through and the horizontal ones are going like this but you can select it and then flip it so the horizontal one is the main one and that the vertical one is being split in half so that's really cool to note how to fix up these problems with the mallions so your curtain systems actually look quite good now when working with these uh, curtain systems, this brings me on to my fifth and final tip for uh, for Revit that I wish I knew earlier. I can go here and go into Edit Profile, and then I can play around with this profile. I can remove the constraints and then finish, and we get some weirdly shaped, uh, weirdly shaped uh, curtain wall. But if I were to go maybe in level one. And let's create a new curtain wall. So I'm just going to go with the wall. And here I'm going to go and attach it to maybe level 2 or maybe even level 3. Or let's go and connect it with, I don't know, like 10,000 millimeters. And let's go with an arc. So I'm just going to go like this with an arc. Yeah, just like that. And let's just flip it to the other side. And if I go into 3D, we've got this big arc. But if I go and select it, as you can see now, the edit profile option and both the reset options are unavailable. So I cannot really edit the profile of this. But let's say I want to have a different profile on top. I want to have it a bit different. What you can do is let's go here in back into level one and let's add a reference plane first. So you can go around this by adding a reference plane here. Oops, not like that. Let's try again. Reference plane, you can use the shortcut RP. And let's name this reference plane and let's call it help because it's helping us. And let's go back into south elevation. So here we can see this curtain wall that we have. And now I'm actually going to create going to create a roof. So just open up this drop menu and go to roof by extrusion. Here I'm going to pick this uh, pick a plane by name and I'm going to go with my reference plane help. Go OK. And here you can select the level. This really isn't important in this case. And here I can go and create maybe an arc like this. So let's do something like that. Extend it just a bit on the outside and hit finish go into 3D and now we can play around with this extrusion roof like that. So just make sure you attach it like this and make it go through this curtain wall. Now you can select the curtain wall, go attach top base and attach it to this wall. Then delete all of the elements and now I can select the wall, right click, 
go here into hide and view and hide element and there we go now we've got this curtain wall that actually has a curved top so that's how you can manipulate these uh, manipulate these curtain walls to add a profile even though this is a curved curtain wall okay so that concludes these five amazing tips for and tricks for working in Revit that I wish I knew when I got started and you know because well I've shown you okay so that's pretty much it if you want to get these this project file as well as all of my Revit project files again as I said check out the first link in the description to my patreon also there you can find some advanced Revit courses that are over hour long I've got 10 of them so far and I make a new one each week okay so that's pretty much it thank you for watching please subscribe like and share this video and if you have any questions comments or suggestions make sure to leave them in the comment section below thank you for watching and have a nice day